Thank you. It's my pleasure tonight to introduce our guest speaker. He is our first guest speaker of the week. Many of our guest speakers will occur during meal times, and you'll receive instructions about when to stop clearing your places, and you'll have an opportunity to finish clearing your places uh, at the conclusion of our guest speaker's comments. So I'm pleased to introduce as our first guest speaker for the 84th session of American Legion, Mount Mir Boyd State, a man who grew up in Braxton County, West Virginia. Do I have any Braxton County natives here today? One. One? Woo! That's it. seat of honor next to our guest speaker. So our guest speaker, our guest speaker is a Marine and a member of American Legion Mountaineer Post 174 in Morgantown, West Virginia. He has spoken here at Boys State numerous times now because he has a great story to tell. He ran a very long distance in 2012. He spent 100 days running 3,452 miles from the Pacific Ocean in Oregon, the coast of Oregon, to the Atlantic Ocean, the coast of Delaware. Delaware. He did that to raise awareness and to raise funds for veterans causes. I know Wounded Warrior Project was one of them. And Operation Welcome Home, which is located in Morgantown, as another one. So please give a warm voice state welcome to our guest speaker, Jamie Summerlin. Well, good evening, men. How are we doing this evening? Good. Are we still awake? How are we doing this evening? Well, it is my honor to be here this evening uh, to spend some time with each one of you, uh, to hopefully inspire you, to hopefully give you a little insight into what you're going to experience this week, and to motivate you to find ways to dig deep and understand that this is your time. This week is your time, your time to learn, your time to lead, your time to be a team player, and your time to become the leader that we so desperately need in the great state of West Virginia. You know, got back together last year after COVID, and it's really, really great to see bigger numbers here this year. And I'm proud of each one of you for taking this opportunity throughout your summer to be able to spend the week here. West Virginia is a special place. I didn't always think that. When I was your age, I was thinking, how can I get out of West Virginia? I spent 18 years trying to get out of this state and 10 trying to get back. Because I realized what I had here was so special. Not just my family, not just you know, the, uh, the atmosphere that I grew up in, but the people, the state itself, the beautiful nature that we have, the incredible pride we have as West Virginians and the way we take care of one another. And that's what I'm going to encourage you to do this week, take care of one another. See, I learned that not just growing up from my family, but when I went to the Marine Corps, 17 days after I graduated high school, I was standing on the yellow footprints of Paris Island, South Carolina. And I raised my hand and swore to defend this country, my friends, my family, and those that I was serving with. I didn't know one person that I was in boot camp with that week. But I grew to have brothers and now sisters 
that I can call friends, I can call family, and I can honestly call on at any given time. Built some tremendous friendships and relationships. 25 years later, I'd kind of fallen away from doing all the military stuff. We didn't really have uh, bases here in the state of West Virginia. You know, I'd come back home and, and uh, got reconnected. Got reconnected with my Marine Corps League, got reconnected, met Matt, got involved in our veterans' causes, and then, as he said, decided in 2012 that I was going to take on the biggest challenge of my life, running across America. 34 and a half miles a day for 100 straight days. How many of you have done a 5K? Raise your hand. You've done a 5K race. How many of you have done 11 of those in one day? Keep your hands raised. Anybody? No? Okay. So that was, there we go. All right. 11 of those for 100 straight days. Uh, that was what I averaged for 100 straight days across America. And every step that I took was to honor the brave men and women who served our country both in the past and were serving those days. It became an opportunity for me to say thank you, to meet my heroes, to shake the hands of men and women who had served this country honorably, and it became an opportunity for me to really embrace what this country is all about. It's about the people. It's about those that we serve with, it's about those that we build relationships with, and it's about the opportunities that you will have this week to build relationships that will last, quite honestly, a life lifetime. Take what you learned this week and go back to your towns, your communities, your schools. Encourage rising juniors to come out next year, to continue to fill this room. COVID is going to leave a massive gap. And unfortunately, it's going to leave a massive gap in leadership. Leadership is what we so desperately need in our communities. And every single one of you in this room are here because you have something within you that somebody saw and said, this young man can be a leader. This young man has the ability to lead our community, to lead their classmates, to lead their families and their friends. Take the leadership opportunities you learned this week and apply it not only to your school but to your communities. It will help you with the college entrance opportunities and I guarantee you it's gonna make you feel good. You are here because this is exactly where you are supposed to be. It's going to be a crazy week. You're going to have a hard time keeping up at times. It's going to be challenging. You're going to be tired. You're going to have to dig deep. And you're going to have to lean on one another when those times do get tough. Figuring out why it's so important that the things that they're teaching you, you might not understand it at that very moment. But as the week goes on and as you go back home, those things will kick in and you'll remember the teachings that you got this week. You'll remember the leadership qualities that you dug deep inside of yourself and figured out you had that you never thought you had before. If you're running for a particular office over the next couple of days, give it your all. Do everything you possibly can to encourage others to understand why you should hold that position. And if you do get the opportunity to lead, to hold one of those offices, Lead with humility. Lead by example. Build trust, which is going to be challenging because most of you are just meeting each other for the first time today. And it's hard to trust somebody immediately. You're going to spend a lot of time together over the next few days, and it's going to give you an opportunity to do that. But again, do it with humility. There's a verse in the Bible in James 4, 7 that says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. If you win your office, lead with humility. Make sure that you are a listener, that you are someone who sets the tone. If you don't win your election, be humble and be the best team player that you can possibly be. Find that person that won that office and support them. Be their biggest supporter. My son, he was here in 2017, as Matt had mentioned, and Right in the heart of that time, whenever he was here, he was going through, obviously, high school, going through track, he was wrestling, and he always said as he was growing up and was starting to run races with his old man, he always just wanted to beat dad. His goal was to beat dad in one of the races. Now, at 16, he turned around and ran a 135 half marathon, and his dad had ran a 133, the best I'd ever done. 
2017, the year he came here, he turned around and ran a 124. And when he did that, I actually hadn't ran the race that day because I had an event that I was going to that evening. I was at the finish line cheering him on. I was his biggest cheerleader when he crossed that line. He was so proud that he had finally beat dad. And I was so proud of him because I know he had worked hard to make that happen. That to me was my goal, was to push him, to see him grow, to see him work through challenges and the hard times so that whenever he had his opportunity, he could shine. You're gonna have those opportunities this week. You're gonna have those opportunities to shine and make sure you give it your all. To be a leader, you've gotta dream big. When I came up with the idea to run across America, I wasn't the first person to do it. I was actually the 48th person to actually do it in the past 100 years where they had kept records. But I learned from those people that had done it before me. I actually had reached out to a couple of people and connected with them and, and took the wisdom that they had. You've got a lot of great men and women here this week that are going to be leading you, that are going to be teaching you great qualities, great opportunities. Take what they give you and learn, listen, and then put it into action. Don't do it yourself, however. Rely on your team. Rely on your tribe. Rely on your class. Rely on your cabin. Rely on one another to be the best person that you can be. Take advantage of every opportunity you can this week. Don't let anything slide by because you think that the days are going to be long. It's going to go by very, very quickly. And you're going to think back on it, man, what an experience that was. Don't let the times go by without taking advantage of every opportunity. And learn from the challenges and the failures that will happen. Because not everything's going to go perfect this week. Not everything's going to go the way that you want it to. I had a guy ask me before I took off on the run, he said, are you not worried about your kids seeing you go through this? Nick and Shana were 10 and 12 at the time. Whenever I did the run, they were with us the entire way in the RV. And I told them, I said, yeah, I'm concerned, but there are going to be tough days that I want my kids to see me work through. Because my goal is that someday down the road when they're faced with challenges, they think back and say, you know what? If dad could get through it, so can I. Be there to encourage each other, support each other, especially whenever challenges come your way this week. I still remember our trip home in 2017 with my son. And to this day, he still has friendships that he built from his week at Boy State. Hearing some of the conversations that he had, the deep conversations that he had with young men that he had never met before, and the opportunity that he had to build those relationships that he has carried on through his college years. He just graduated from WVU this past week. And now working with some of those guys and being able to spend time with them. It's really, really cool to see. Take advantage of those opportunities. I also remember hearing him share about how he recognized the fact that there were so many out there that gave him the opportunity to be here this week. You're here because of people like that. There are people in your community that have invested in you. They've invested financially. They've invested with their time. They've invested with their passion. They believe and see something within you that gave you the opportunity to be here this week. The men and women that are here this week, whether they're wearing the blue shirts as your leaders, the men and women that are working in the chow hall, the people that are here taking care of the facilities, each one of them are invested in you. Make sure you take the opportunity to say thank you. Let them know how much you appreciate the fact that they gave up vacations. They gave up time with their families. They sacrificed themselves so that they could be here for you. They don't see it as a sacrifice. They see it as an investment. An investment in our state, an investment in our communities, and most importantly, an investment in each one of you. That trust that you're going to want to build this week. There's a number of things that come into play to build that trust. It takes hard work. If you're slacking, if you're the person that's kind of always dragging up the rear, you're not giving your all, it's going to be hard to build that trust. Make sure you give it every, every amount of effort that you possibly can. 
Be accountable. Be accountable to one another. If there's things you're struggling with, let somebody know. Talk to them. Ask them for help. Make sure that you're not trying to do this all by yourself this week. And another opportunity to build trust, be quiet. At times, sometimes listening is the best thing you can do. Take a moment to just listen. Listen to your bunkmates. Listen to the leaders. Listen to the people that are here investing their opportunities and their times into you. Good leaders, listen. I, believe, I belong to a number of different service organizations, as Matt said, Legion one, Post 174. I'm a member of our Cheat Lake Rotary Club in Morgantown, and I'm honored and humbled this coming year to serve as the president of our Cheat Lake Rotary Club. We are doing some amazing things, just like a number of other service organizations in our community. But one of the things that I truly am excited about with Rotary is this thing that they call the four-way test. And I've shared this here before, but I think it's very, very valuable for everybody to understand. Rotary has a four-way test. Is it the truth? Number one, be honest this week. Be honest with your bunkmates, with your leaders, and be honest, most of all, with yourself. The second part of that test, is it fair to all concerned? Be fair to one another this week. Not just for one small group, not just for your cabin, but the overall integrity of the camp. Make the class of 2023 the best it could possibly be. Will it build goodwill and better friendship? The third part of that four-way test. You'll be competing amongst the cabins for all kinds of things this week. Build respect for one another. Treat each other with respect. Not just in your cabin, but again, with those that you meet. And those will be those friendships that will last a lifetime. And finally, will it be beneficial to all concerned? How will the decisions that you make at that moment, not what you're thinking about is going to happen in a couple of days, but when you're faced with that test, when you're faced with that challenge, how will that decision that you make at that very moment be the most beneficial to all concerned, not just you? This is your time. This is your week. But how is it going to make everyone else benefit as well? There's an old African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go as a team. Work as a team this week and it will benefit all. You will go farther. You will have a greater impact. Again, this is your time. When you have doubts, when you are struggling, when you're tired, when you're trying to get that last second of rest, dig deep. Because again, this week is going to go by very, very quickly. Take every opportunity you can to build relationships that will last a lifetime. And when you think you've given it all, I promise you, there's a little bit more left to give. Why don't everybody do me a favor? Go ahead and sit up in your seat. Sit up in your chair. Good. I want everybody in the room to raise your hands and put them up over your head. Put your hands up high. Now hold them up there. Now, you're going to be tired this week. You're going to be challenged. There's going to be opportunities for you to feel like, you know what, I can just hide in the back. I can just let my hands down a little bit. Get them back up there. Keep them up there. There's going to be opportunities for you to maybe not just dig in there a little deeper. But you've got somebody sitting across the table from you right there that's going to rely on you that's going to need you, that's going to need you to dig deep. Everybody got their hands up. All right, now I want you to do me one favor. Get them up there as high as you can. All right. Give me one more inch. Now, look across the table from you. All right, go ahead, put your hands down. I had everybody get their hands up as high as they could, and then I asked... Just give a little bit more. And you had a little bit more left in you. But there's also that thought in your mind. The person across from me, they're going to see me not giving enough. They're going to see me not give a little bit more. Make sure that they see you giving your all this week. 
Make sure that they see you doing everything you can to dig deep whenever you feel like you can't give anymore and dig deeper. Help each other succeed this week. Make this the best week you could possibly have so that when you go back to your schools, you are those leaders that they're, that they're training you to be this week. This is your time. This is your opportunity. Make the most of the 84th year of Boy State. Help your school, help your community, help your family, and help your state shine. Because each one of you are going to make a difference. Each one of you are going to walk away this week a changed young man. Take advantage of the opportunities. This is your time. Thank you.